What is going on guys? My name is Hugh and in this video we're going to be doing something a little interesting. So as I was shopping around for Jackie, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, it's down in the description below or it's going to be up in the eyeball here. I recently just bought a 7-string guitar and while I was shopping for a 7-string guitar uh, at my local guitar center actually, I found another guitar. Hear me out. Before you start going like, why are you buying all this stuff? I found another guitar that was dirt cheap. I mean like cheap, cheap. It was like 60 bucks. I found this instrument just kind of sitting there. It was all like dusty. There was some kind of signature writing on the back of it. Um, but it was the most outputting thing I've ever seen in a music store. Like it was so strange to see a really, really like, it wasn't beat up, it was like dirty. It was full of like carpet hair or some dog hair. It was, I don't know why, but I had the urge to learn a little bit more about this instrument and I bought it. <laughs> so here he is. Let me introduce you to another member. This is Ben. Now, how do I know that? I just made up the name. No, actually, if you look on the back of this, if you look at the back here, there's some stuff written on the back of this instrument. And look right there. Oh, it's upside down. It says it was Ben. Apparently he was drunk when he wrote this. <laughs> So I don't know if that was signed by another musician or something. I have no idea. But this is a solid guitar. Like it's not really that beat up at all. Um, except it's got these uh, tabs here. I guess this must have been some kind of beginner's guitar. So it's got the numbers of the frets on here. I mean, look at this, by the way. This thing is, uh, it's pretty grody. <laughs> now, I don't know what urged me to get this instrument. I think it's because it told a story yeah, can you see all that? I'm not kidding when I said that this thing was pretty, pretty beat up actually. So it was uh, covered in some sort of sustenance on this instrument and it's missing a knob here. But we're gonna be fixing that today. Um, so I'm actually gonna be cleaning this entire instrument, getting all the fur out of the uh, bridges and everything. And then we're also gonna be putting some brand new strings on this, tuning this correctly. Um, there is a couple of things I might fix later on like this. It's a little bit janky. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little janky, that little <laughs> knob there, but it still works. It still works. So it's not like it's broken or anything. It's just a little loose, but I'll see if I can fix that. It looks like you can, yeah, you can get behind the thing there. So I think I'd be able to fix that, but this would be an interesting little project because this doesn't look like a bad instrument. Like it, it sounds fine, but it's got the same pieces as the red guitar that I have, the uh, Epiphone, but I've never heard of this first act ME201. If anybody's heard of that brain before, let me know because I, I have seriously no idea if this is a good brand or not. Remember, this thing was $60. I mean, $60 and a couple of cents or something like that out the door. I, I'm always like curious about instruments like that where you just see them in a music, randomly in a music store and they're like dirt cheap. It really doesn't matter how much you spend on an instrument. I think you can make what you can out of it with just like some strings, a good tune. Maybe if you want, you could change the pickups or update some components and stuff, change the knobs. But let's get started on this. I am super, super pumped because I really am very curious to see what my 60 bucks got for me on this little guy here. Let's see if we can make this little guy like look a lot nicer and sound a lot nicer because these strings are... Three of them are dark and grody and then the other three look like they're brand new but they've got some corrosion and rust and stuff on it. Nice. So let's get started, shall we? Let's start with the cleaning process, because I, I really don't want to touch this thing anymore. Okay, so we got everything pretty much laid out. So before you say anything, yes, I use wipes because uh, germs and grodiness and disgustingness. So don't judge me. This is not going to hurt it. I've done it on all my instruments, and it has not broken anything. But to cover that, I also got this spray. So I got this spray here that I've been using on all my instruments. It's really good. It's very, uh, like, it's not super chemically or anything, but it helps protect, like, the bridge and the paints and all the little components on the instrument. It's really nice. It's I think it's like five bucks or something like that. I don't remember, but it's really, really good stuff, actually. And on top of that, I got three different sets of strings. Now, <laughs> a couple of these I kind of just found laying around in one of my bags. So, and then I just bought a new set of strings for this anyway. So I have no idea. I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. 
I may not use these. These might be a little bit too heavy for him. So I think I might do either the 44 and down or the 42 gauge and down. I don't know. We'll make the decision when we get there. Uh, but first things first, we got to start disassembling this and uh, try to get this all nice and clean. So it looks somewhat presentable when we get rid of some of this fur sitting over here. Wow, whoever had this, like, so these strings are supposed to go in, but two of them are going out like this, and then this one's going inwards. So I don't know what the hell happened there. Is it even here? Like, that's that's not right. The strings are supposed to go in, you know, it's supposed to be spinning this way, you know, but then these two are going that way, and then this one's going this way. What the, <laughs> what the hell happened there? are really in there what in the hell ah there we go and there's the last one wow these are all colored why is why is that that is a little strange Now that we got the instrument all cleaned up, look at that. Look how much this thing shines now with all that gunk and fur or whatever that was that was sitting on there. Like all the components are nice and shiny again. Literally, I had to go through the guitar like three or four times to like clean it up because there was still gunk. There was still like fur or something stuck inside like crevices here and here and then stuff over here. Now, unfortunately, in the, clean in the cleaning process, the signatures on here disappeared because uh, it was just a sharpie so it must have been fairly recent when they assigned that on there it has been buried on uh, it might have been like an expo marker so it wasn't a permanent marker sadly but the main thing is to just see what this guitar sounds like when you get strings on it and i'm actually going to fix these these are a little elevated for me so i got to readjust the pickups here and then i also got to readjust these to a specific height here so that way the strings don't sit so high up because before the strings, here's the fretboard, here's where the strings sat. <laughs> they were like way too high up. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and see if I can fix that a little bit. Okay, so a little bit off camera, I kind of fiddled with uh, some of the pieces here. So again, I don't know what anything's called. I just put things together. So, um, but I did adjust it the way I wanted on here. So each little thing, I'll try to zoom in on digitally. It's slightly further up. So the heavier the string, the more this little piece is forward. Uh, it's how I have it set up on my red guitar. So I just kind of slowly inclined it and then slowly inclined it again. I mean, to me, I think the heavier the string, the further this should go to keep the string off the fretboard. Uh, but I could be wrong. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys can correct me on that. I've never really looked into anything of what this all means. So I just kind of copy and paste what I already did or already know from previous tunings and previous like string installations and stuff on my guitars. And I already readjusted these here. 
So I spun it at least, I spun it all the way down and I spun it three times with these little arrows facing each other, or these little gaps. So that should, and I think that's how I set it up on the red guitar as well. So now that can just go right here. And then these, these don't move, do they? Oh, they do, okay. So let's go one, two, one, two. Yeah, this should be fine. You know what? Let's do the regular slinkies. 46 sounds pretty good. Though. Okay, so it's a little bit later in the day. I went out to go work out for a minute and then I came back, showered, and now we're here. Gonna be tuning Ben, so, but also I have everything recording through here through OBS so you guys can hear, uh, you know, me tuning this and what this thing's gonna sound like. So, first things first, let me finish tuning this thing. <laughs> bull, bull. <laughs> All right, let's see, does that sound right? Huh. Yeah, that sounds about right, doesn't it? <laughs> that sounds like that. Just... <laughs> just... <laughs> oh, what is that on the... <laughs> oh, what did I just step it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to keep that as a sound effect now. Oh, I got more. <laughs> Sorry. All right, and we're back because I had to change the battery and I ever, never, never charged my batteries on my cameras. I'm a dumbass. All right, okay, so now I got this thing fully tuned. There we go. What I usually do is down here, I have my foot pedal, I don't have my camera on it, but I'm going to click it. So now, but when I leave it without the wall on it, it actually sounds cleaner. Not a bad little guitar actually, so it sounds really good. Now, I, I kind of mess with the knobs down here a little bit. And they're all the way cranked up, and I think. Kind of go... I gotta get that fixed because you can hear it buzzing when I'm doing that. Uh, the red guitar used to do that when I was tuning the buttons. Is that it started going buzzing, but that's okay, it's normal. This sounds really good. Like I'm, it's because it's got the same pickups as the red guitar that I have, the Epiphone, and I love these pickups when you try to do a clean riff. It's freaking awesome. Let me go here. Ooh, that sounds a lot more crisp, though. Hold on. Dude, I love 
love this thing. This is actually a really good like starter guitar. Now to get him to get a little serious. <laughs> Let's go down to treble. Okay, now let's try out the wah pedal. Now this is not any wah on it, I'm just going to turn it on. Hey, uh, Mike, I think we found a gem over here. Hey, remember that riff? You guys can go check out my Sonic 30th Anniversary song. Oh, you guys might know this one. This is one of the other songs I love playing. Good. Let me try with the wah pedal a little bit. Well, like, it sounds exactly like the Epiphone that I have, except this is, like, <laughs> way cheaper than that. This is a $60 guitar. I randomly found in a store, and then this sounds exactly like the red guitar. Okay, I gotta get that fixed. I don't know what that is. I have pretty much everything on the knobs cranked all the way up. So, and that's that's where I'm getting that crisp sound from. I'll go down to here. This goes to show you that it doesn't matter how expensive the instrument is, especially when it comes to guitars. You could, oops, you could spend like boo cool's amount of money. Like you could spend like three hundred dollars on that Epiphone and still get the same results with this as if you would with a three hundred or four hundred or six hundred dollar instrument. Don't be afraid of a cheap instrument because it's a price tag thing. You know what I mean? But when you buy an instrument that's cheap and you put good strings on it, you tune it. I mean, I, I had to mess with some of the stuff here to get it all lined up. I messed with the board here. Here, hold on. There we go. So I messed with a lot of the stuff here to get it the way, you know, I want it to sound. But other than that, all it takes is just some spring cleaning, some strings, you know, maybe a little modification down here, and that's it. Like, 60 bucks can get you that sound. Like, this sounds exactly like... Sam, my Epiphone, my red Epiphone that I have, that's literally like a four or six hundred dollar guitar. But don't ever like, you know, second guess a cheap instrument, even if it's a piano or something. Try it out, like try it out or buy it sight unseen and then just play with it. You'd be incredibly amazed and probably mind blown at what instrument you just bought uh, just randomly in a store. And it sounds really, really good. You know, who's to say we could still experiment a little bit more with this guy, but this will be my specialty guitar on the YouTube channel. So when you see the boys play, this will be my instrument to play on camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something out of this. You know, like I said, don't oversee a cheap instrument. Try it out. 
take it home, take good care of it. It just needs a home. It just wants to be somewhere. You know, it doesn't want to be sitting in a store rotting out like this thing was. Um, just don't oversee it. Try it out. You know, buy it. Maybe get some nice stuff for it, like piano, get new software on it, or guitars, get new strings on it. Always take care of your instruments. Rather it be already currently beat up, this was used. So rather it be used, brand new, whatever. Always take care of your instruments because they could sound really good and last you a very, 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 very long time. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. There's another video coming out this week as well, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you goons later. Huh?